Hi everyone, this is Subeda from Zephyr Lake Carmelite Mission. Today I'm going to introduce you to two wonderful saints from the Catholic Church, Saint Anthony of the Desert, who lived in Egypt, and Saint Sebastian from Italy. Both of their feast days are in this week. Saint Anthony's feast was on Monday, January 17th. And St. Sebastian's Feast is today. And St. Sebastian is my patron saint. Uh, I was given his name at my baptism. And so I'd like to share with you about these two great saints from the early Christian times. St. Anthony uh, was born in the year 261 AD. And he was born into a very wealthy family. Uh, he had a younger sister. And when he was only 18 years old, both his parents died. And uh, St. Anthony felt this calling uh, by God after he heard the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus says to the rich young man to sell what you have and give to the poor and come follow me. Uh, he felt that was a personal calling to him when he heard that Gospel being read at Mass. And so he put his younger sister in the care of some nuns and he sold all his property. He gave it to the poor and to the church and he went off into the desert to pray ceaselessly. And he is the one who practiced the Jesus prayer where he constantly prayed, Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he uh, prayed ceaselessly and his calling and vocation was uh, to a life of penance, a life of solitude and silence in, uh, to support the church uh, and the believers of his time. And we know that uh, in a later time, he heard the words of the gospel, from, also from the gospel of Matthew, to not, to not be anxious about tomorrow uh, when he was worried and was second guessing whether maybe he did the wrong thing. He could have used that um, money to help the poor and he, he you know he maybe he was neglecting his duty towards his sister all these thoughts of guilt were coming into his mind and then he uh, read this gospel passage do not be anxious about tomorrow and he knew he was on the right path also he uh, would do manual labor including making these baskets and he would sell those baskets through the people who brought him bread in order to not get food freely, but to you know provide something back in return because he um, read in the letters of St. Paul, St. Paul saying that if anyone will not work, uh, do not let him eat. So he was very, very conscientious and he uh, you know uh, knew the scripture uh, very well, even though he didn't go to a lot of studies he was a man of the scripture and a man of pe uh, prayer, penance, and a lover of solitude. We know that uh, St. Anthony's biggest vocation in life was to fight the devil. And he did that through his life of prayer and solitude in the desert. He would fight the devil himself physically a lot of the times. and. Um, that was his martyrdom. He didn't die a martyr like Saint Sebastian. He was a, he was martyred for his faith, but Saint Anthony's monastic life for his life of martyrdom, and he uh, overcame the flesh. The spirit overcame the flesh in the life of Saint Anthony. And uh, at the time when Saint Anthony was in the desert battling the demons battling the devil himself on behalf of the church through his life of prayer and penance, we know that the big uh, heresy, the Arian heresy, where the divinity of Christ was challenged by many Christians of that time. And Saint Athanasius was fighting many political battles uh, because of this heresy. Many bishops, in fact, at one point, majority of the bishops in the church were denying the divinity of Christ and that Arian heresy was very rampant. 
At that time, St. Anthony actually left the desert and went into the villages nearby to first to bear witness to his own belief by professing his faith in the divinity of Christ and refuting the Arian heresy and giving support to St. Athanasius and other bishops and other uh, people of faith who were battling this heresy. We know that in the end, uh, St. Anthony lived up to the age of 105 uh, and he spent his entire life sleeping in this small rough cave and barely eating anything other than bread and water and he uh, taught the monastic life to all the present day monks. You can say that he is the father of monasticism. He is a patriarch of monks and he's honored by both the Catholic Church as well as the Orthodox Church. And he was tempted by the devil for more than 20 years, they say. But, you know, probably throughout his life he had to fight, uh, you know, the devil at some point. And um, he, people flocked to him for advice. In fact, many people uh, wanted to be like St. Anthony of the desert. And that's how the first monastery was founded in and around where he was. Um, and he guided people, he supported people, he showed them how to overcome the flesh and to lead a life in the spirit. So that is St. Anthony of the desert and then St. Sebastian. So St. Sebastian was also in and around the early Christian time and um, he was born in Milan in Italy and uh, St. Um, Sebastian uh, was also from a very wealthy family and he was a captain of the Roman soldiers. And um, it is said that he didn't disclose his Christian identity because his goal was to help the Christian martyrs who were being persecuted by the Romans. And so he, he actually went from Milan to Rome because the persecution in Milan was not that severe as it was in Rome. And he kept his identity as a Christian secret so he could help the Christians who were being persecuted. And we know that um, at one point, there was those Christians who were going to sacrifice to the Roman uh, gods who were nature gods, and they were going to apostatize from their faith because the persecution was so severe. And that's when Saint Sebastian disclosed his Christian identity. Not only did he disclose his Christian identity, there was this big apparition vision of heaven, of um, angels and even maybe the mother of God. And the, he worked so many miracles and wonders that the people who were going to be on the brink of uh, apostatizing um, became more fervent than ever before and were willing to give up their life for their faith. Not only that, even the persecutors, the Roman soldiers who were persecuting them, the Christians, now wanted to be baptized. And Saint Polycarp was a priest at that time who baptized many of these Roman soldiers who had you know, a conversion of heart. So he, Saint Sebastian is, uh, uh, had two narrow escapes, actually one narrow escape from death when he was um, uh, struck by many arrows and left to die. Uh, but then he was nursed back to life by a, a wealthy woman. And then later on, again, uh, the Romans uh, beat him with clubs and he died as a martyr. But uh, we know that Saint Sebastian uh, is a protector. He intercedes for, for protector, protector for people suffering from infectious disease and plague. And uh, we know that he's also the patron saint for soldiers and athletes. So we ha see a red martyrdom and in the life of Saint Anthony, we see martyrdom from a monastic way of life. I'd like to read this um, from the Office of Readings for today, the second reading. It is from an exposition of Psalm 118 by Saint Ambrose, the bishop, who also wrote a life story of Saint Anthony. If you would like to read that, it's also in the Office of Readings for January 17th. 
but in the interest of time, I'm just going to read the one by Saint uh, Ambrose uh, on Saint Sebastian. And the reason I chose this one is, in today's time, we suffer from invisible persecutors. And reading this gave me tremendous amount of uh, peace and uh, comfort and strength to know that persecution is been there from the beginning of Christianity and will continue to be there until the end. So we should stay strong. We should pray to Saint Anthony and to Saint Sebastian to give us the courage to be faithful witnesses of Christ. To enter the kingdom of God, we must endure many tribulations. If there are many persecutions, there are many testings. Where there are many crowns of victory, there are many trials of strength. It is then to your advantage if there are many persecutors. Among many persecutions, you may more easily find a path to victory. Take the example of the martyr Sebastian, whose birthday in glory we celebrate today. He was a native of Milan at a time when persecution either had ceased or not yet begun, or was a milder kind, he realized that there was only one slight, if, if any, opportunity for suffering. He set out for Rome, where bitter persecutions were raging because of the fervor of the Christians. There he endured suffering. There he gained his crown. He went to the city as a stranger and there established a home of undying glory. If there had been only one persecutor, he would not have gained a martyr's crown. The persecutors who are visible are not only not the only ones, there are also invisible persecutors, much greater in number. This is more serious. Like a king bent on persecution, sending orders to persecute his many agents and establishing different persecutors in each city or province, the devil directs his many servants in their work of persecution, whether in public or in the souls of individuals. Of this kind of persecution, scripture says, all who wish to live a holy life in Christ Jesus suffer persecution. All suffer persecution, there is no exception. Who can claim exception if the Lord himself endured the testing of persecution? How many there are today who are secret martyrs for Christ, giving testimony to Jesus as Lord? The apostle knew this kind of martyrdom. This faithful witnessing to Christ, he said, this is our boast, the testimony of our conscience. So with that, I pray that we would be blessed with the spirit of courage to suffer either martyrdom like Saint Anthony by a life of prayer, ceaseless prayer and penance, or by red martyrdom like Saint Sebastian, whichever crown God chooses for us, may we receive it this day. That's my reflection for today. I hope you have a blessed day, everyone, and happy Feast of St. Sebastian and St. Anthony of the Desert.